Hey YouTube, it's me. I'm Rental Mama Adrian. Finally, sleeve vertically coming to you. It is June 6, 2018. It's been three years since my uh, sleeve gastrectomy. Um, yeah, I just wanted to come and give you a quick update, let you know I'm still around. Hi y'all, I miss y'all. Um, yes, three years, and I just came to tell you that I have regained. I'm not proud about it, but I have regained. I'm back up to 209 pounds. I'm still 60 pounds to the good, because if you all remember, I was like 265 when I started. I'm 209, so still 60 pounds to the good. <sighs> yeah. So I've gained the money. I've gained the money. Okay, I claim I receive it. I gained the money. <laughs> <laughs> so I've gained um 30 some pounds. I'm not happy about it. Um walking around now in a size 14, 16 clothes, which ain't bad uh, to say that I came from a 24, 28. Um yeah, you know. So I've learned a few things on my journey, y'all. I've learned a couple things. I've learned number one is I can't eat popcorn every day and add extra butter to the extra butter popcorn. I can't do that. I've also learned that I can't eat a slice of pizza for lunch every day and think everything is gonna be all right. I've also learned that I can't swing by McDonald's in the morning on my way to work and get a sausage biscuit every morning and think that everything is gonna be all right. So I have slipped into my old habits. These are the five things that I've I eat, and I don't stray from these five things. I eat popcorn, pizza, breakfast sausages, sauteed shrimp, and grits. That's my whole diet. I don't eat chicken, I don't eat beef, I don't eat, I mean, you know, I don't cook chicken at home, I don't cook my beef at home. The only thing I cook at home is shrimp because I can Take it out the freezer, rinse it off, clean it up, throw it in the microwave for three minutes, and bam, I got my meal with instant grits. So yeah, I'm screwing up. I'm messing up big time. Um, I'm at the point now where I don't eat to in, I don't eat because I enjoy the food. I don't eat because I enjoy the flavor. I eat when I get hungry, and I don't care what it is. So I need to start preparing foods at home again so that when I'm hungry, I can grab what's in the refrigerator and not worry about what I'm eating. You know what I mean? I can, I can eat more healthy choices, you know, instead of just eating on the fly. I've also learned that I need to get more rest because I've realized that it's in those Long hours when I'm not sleeping at night. Okay, this is my work schedule. Okay, I work from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. I get up at 5 a.m. in the morning, take my shower, putts around the house, and then leave to work by 6 o'clock. So there's not much putzing around in an hour. So I'm up at 5, in the shower, out the door by 6 a.m. every morning. Most mornings, I eat my breakfast at work and my breakfast is usually my sauteed um, shrimp no bread no breading no oil no butter no nothing which ain't bad in itself but then there's the instant grits that i eat with it that's usually every morning every morning i also stop at mcdonald's and get me a cup of coffee a big one to last all day and i grab a sausage biscuit and i'll eat that for lunch then my kids are back at home, so there's pizza. So I'll pack up a slice of pizza and take that to work for lunch twice a week, you know. So those are the things that I eat, and I don't stray from those things. And I, I don't prepare food at home, and I, you know, the kids don't cook. They're fast food in and out, and they're gone, and, you know, and I'm not cooking, and I'm not sleeping. And so I find that I can't sleep most nights. So I'm up until 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, then I get sleepy, then I fall asleep and jump back up at 5 and I'm going to work. So I'm awake 20 hours out of 24 
usually. And I find myself eating that popcorn as a snack in the late night hours because I can't sleep. So at one point my doctor had me on Ambien. I think I made a video about what I did to myself while I was on Ambien. But when my grandbaby was born and they came to live with me, I decided I wasn't taking that Ambien no more because it had me doing crazy stuff. Had me dry shaving the inside of my thighs till I bled. Had me cooking a whole loaf of bread and all the cheese, grilled cheese sandwiches, and going and placing plates of food in the kids' rooms. That was Ambien. So I decided, no, nope, I'm not going to take Ambien with the baby here because I don't want to cook the baby. You know, I'm no telling what I would do on that stuff. So I stopped. Hang on one second. Let me plug up this phone. Hang on one second. Hi, it's me. Okay. So yeah, so that's what I've been doing. So I've been gaining weight. 209 pounds. Someone said, well, that's not a lot. That's not a lot. But it's too much. I want to get down to maybe 100 and... If I could float around 175, 180, I would be good. My lowest was... 171 and I floated back to 171 to 178 then it was 178 to 182 and I floated between 182 and 175 and then it kept going up and I floated between 175 and 189 then I you know I got back down to like 185 and I floated from 185 to 191 you know and that's how I crept back up just a little bit of you know back up back and I think it was mostly because, number one, I'm not eating correctly. And number two, I'm not exercising like I used to. I used to go for walks every day. You know, I'd keep my gym shoes in my car. And if I drove past a place that I thought, hey, that might be a nice place to walk, I'd get out and walk for an hour before I came home, you know. And then on my days off, I would go to a particular place that I had picked out for that day. Like I would go to Belle Isle. Um, down in Detroit or I would go out to Metro Park or I would go out to Southfield or I would go out to Garden City to their track and I would walk and you know I would just find where, places to just go and walk and then I had my co-workers um, motivated and uh, we got our memberships to the local hype fitness um, place and we would go swimming and we would go walking and we would do our exercises and we would do the uh, water aerobics and Zumba and all kinds of stuff, but I stopped doing that stuff. They stopped doing that stuff. You know, now I want to do it again, and they're like, oh, you're just going to quit again. So they kind of lost their faith in me, um, but I haven't. So um, I still get out and go for a walk, but not like I used to. In fact, it's been a long time, and the day before yesterday when I got off work, I... Uh, was it the day before yesterday? No, it was yesterday. I got off work at 7 p.m. and it was nice outside and it wasn't too hot. I had on my gym shoes because I work with my gym shoes on and I just went and over to the park by my job and just walked around and it said one time around was a half a mile and I could only make it one time around. Not because I was in any pain, not because, no, let me say it right, not because I was tired, but I was in pain. My, my calves were my muscles were locked up, you know, it was painful. So I know it's gonna take me a minute to go through and build myself back up to where I was, where I was walking five and six, seven miles a day, you know. It's gonna take a while for me to get back to that, but. Um, so yeah, I've also noticed that um, I, I'm showing signs of diabetes again, um, since I gained this 30 some pounds. I'm starting to feel tired and heavy again, you know. Um, frequent urination some days is nonstop. Most days I don't have a problem with frequent urination because I can't feel my bladder. Um, so I can sit at work for 12 hours and not go, and my coworkers have to remind me, Adrian, you gotta go to the bathroom. I haven't seen you go to the bathroom. Not that they're all in my business, but I've been working with these people for 17 years, so they know my medical history, and they know that if I don't, go and make myself use the bathroom. I, I sit there until my bladder literally hurts. Um, and then I have to go to the bathroom and that's how I know I gotta go. But lately, I've had this frequent urination urge that is unusual to me, except for when I have diabetes. And I know that's crazy. Y'all might have never ever heard of that before. 
but I just don't have the urge to urinate like normal people do and I could go for hours, which is bad because it makes a mess of my body when it comes to bladder infections and stuff. But said all that to say this, I know that I am showing signs of diabetes again because of the, few, the frequent urination that I'm experiencing. So I know I gotta get back down. I gotta make an appointment with my doctor. Oh, this is be my third year in September to be my three year search anniversary. And I haven't seen the doctor in so long, I don't even know. I don't even know if they even know my name anymore. But um, yeah, so I need to make an appointment for that. Um, yeah. So there's a lot that I need to do. There's a lot I haven't been doing. Um, yeah, it's time. 30 something pounds. So don't feel sorry for me though. I, I'm still proud of myself, you know, and I still look good when I get dressed up, honey. Um, and it's not all about that, but that's, if somebody tells you that it's not all about that, they're telling a dang on story because it feels good to get compliments. You know, it feels good to look good. It feels good to get dressed and say, hey, I look cute today, okay? You know, it's all about but it's not just about the looks, it's about my health too, because as I just said, I'm starting to feel the symptoms of the diabetes creeping back up on me, and I don't want to be sick anymore. You know, I might get sick this time and be sick to death, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that to myself, and I don't want to do that to my children. You understand what I'm saying? So it's time for me to get back to the basics. Um, it's time for me to lose the regain. You know, I have an advantage this time, you know, um, the advantage that I have this time is that I know what I need to do. I know I need to eat right. I know I, and I know how to eat right. And I know I need to exercise and I know what exercises I enjoy. You know what I mean? I know these things, you know, and I know what to drink and I know how to start and I know what, um, the protein drinks does for my body. And I know what eating whole foods does for my body. I know what walking every day does for my body, including for my sleep. When I was walking every day, I didn't need that Ambien. I, you know, I told you I had given up the Ambien because of the baby that was coming into the house. But when I was walking every day, I didn't need that Ambien. After I walked that seven miles, came home, did whatever I needed to do around the house, took a shower and went to bed, honey, I slept. So I know that I can get more rest from exercising. So I know eating better, exercising, getting more rest, those are the three keys to keeping the weight off. So I know what I need to do. It's not like when I first started this journey and I didn't know what I was gonna do. You know, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know I had the books, what they said to do, but I had never done it. But I stepped out on faith and I did what they said to do and it worked. It worked. Now, my sleeve has not stretched. I can still only eat a small amount. But like I said in that video that I made almost a year ago, I have found a way to trick my body into accepting more food. If I make a plate of food that I don't want to stop eating when I start to feel full, I just keep eating. And my stomach feels full, but then I start to feel full here, and then here, and then here. And pretty soon I'm full up to the gills with food just sitting in my esophagus. And that's a miserable feeling, but I have done that to myself more than once. And that's one of the things that we learn, that I have learned, I'll speak only for myself. That's one of the things that I learned to do in order to eat around my tool, my pouch, my tool, my stomach. My stomach is still itty bitty. I can eat um, like this. I can eat this. Little bitty, they call it a cutie, but I, I forget what it's really called. Let me see if I can tell you what it's really called. It is... It is an easy to peel mandarin, and, the, and they call them cuties. Well, when I get hungry and I need a snack, I can eat this and be satisfied. And be satisfied and not be hungry anymore. It, it fills my pouch. Not to say that my pouch is this small because I have a sleeve, but this small amount of food is enough to satisfy me if I leave it at that. In reality, and I've done it, my body can hold, my pouch can hold three of these. This is about how much my pouch can hold. Can you see that? This is how much my pouch can hold. Maybe a little bit less. Maybe a little bit less, but three cuties is how much my pouch will hold. Um, I feel satisfied after eating one, and I feel full after eating two. 
But if I eat three, I start to feel a little, it starts to come up, feel like it's coming up. So I know my tool is still worse, but I also know that I have tricked myself into tricking my tool and to eating around it. Um, one of the main things that I have, and have you guys heard of um, transfer addiction? I think that I took a class once before I had the surgery where they briefly touched on like bing, on transfer addiction. And I am a victim of transfer addiction. And I have many. Some people it's alcohol, some people it's pills, drugs, marijuana, you know, some people I've even heard someone say shoplifting. <gasps> mine mine aren't those things. I don't drink. I don't smoke marijuana, I don't take pills, crazy, you know, I don't, uh, there's a lot of things I don't do, but my transfer addiction is popcorn, and I gamble. Those are my transfer addictions. When I don't have the money to gamble, I got the money to go get popcorn, and I eat popcorn until I'm stuffed to the gills. And then when I do have the money to go gamble, I gamble until I don't have any more money. So I'm dealing with transfer addictions now too. Yeah. I'm not making excuses and I'm just being real with you. I, I, I think you probably heard of them. There are some Facebook groups that, that cater to those with transfer addictions after having weight loss surgery. And man, some of the stories that I hear are horrific. I feel sorry for these ladies and gentlemen with these transfer addictions. They don't have the addiction of the food anymore, but there's some kind of mechanism in all of us, I guess, which is why we were over, overweight and obese in the first place, that doesn't let us quit. It doesn't let us quit. It just says more, 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 more. So it's more alcohol, more food, more popcorn, more bingo, more gambling, more casino, more ching, more pills, more whatever it is, more sex. There's people who have become addicted to sex now that they're slim and they're attractive and they're attracting more people than they did when they were heavy they turn to having sex with these people and it's become an addiction for them that's their um, transfer addiction so I'm dealing with that too I'm not dealing with the sex the drugs the pills the smoke the alcohol those things I'm dealing with popcorn and gambling and that's a bad situation the popcorn in itself is bad enough, but the gambling, I, I can go to the casino, which is right downtown, and I can gamble away my whole paycheck if I took it with me. That's how bad it is, because my body just says, my brain just says, more, 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 more. You know, again, 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 let's do it 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 again. Like it would be if I were eating french fries. Just one more, just one more, just one more, just one more. Like before I lost the weight and I would go through a fast food drive through and I would go in McDonald's and get the french fries and then go to Burger King to get the burger and then go to Wendy's to get a Frosty and then come home and pick up a pizza for the kids. You know what I mean? And that would be... My, my food, my french fries, my Whopper, my Frosty, and a slice of pizza or two. Of course, I can't do that now. My body won't let me do that, but I can eat a slice of pizza and then take a bite in 20 minutes and a bite and another 20 minutes and another bite, 20 minutes later and another bite 20, until I've eaten two slices of pizza. You know, excuse me. So yeah, it can, it can get bad. It really can. And um, yeah, so that's where I am. So. I come to you guys, not so that you can feel sorry for me. Please don't feel sorry for me because I don't feel sorry for myself. I'm still proud of myself because having the surgery was a huge step for me. Let me just explain something to you. I have never done, I've never had an idea in my head about wanting to do something and then doing it in my life until then. You know, I've never completed anything in my life until then. I didn't have any dreams or aspirations of doing anything because I just didn't have the motivation ever, you know? But when I had that surgery, when I had the surgery and I did what it took to have the surgery, I did the exercise program, I did the weight, I, I did the um, the medically 
monitored weight loss even before the surgery. I did that. I felt so accomplished from doing that, you know. And even today, even though it's three years later, and even though I've gained 30 pounds over those three years, um, I still feel accomplished. Like I did something. I did something good for me. You know what I mean? And even though I've, I've let the weight creep up, creep up, creep up, and I haven't done anything to, co to combat it, I still love me and the way I look and the way I feel. But now I know it's time to tighten it up, time to do more. So I don't want y'all to feel sorry for me. Please don't feel sorry for me. Love me. Pray for me. Help to motivate me. Leave a comment. Tell me what you think I should do to get myself back on track. Tell me what you're doing to get back on track. Be honest with me. You know, don't dog me out, though, because I'll cuss you out. You know, yes, I will. You, you ain't never heard me cuss before, have you? Honey, I can get down with it. Nothing to be proud about, but you cuss me, I'll cuss you back. Hey, cuss me and I'll cuss you back. Mm, 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 mm. Cuss me and I'll cuss you back. Oh. Um, Okay, back to what I was saying. So like my video, give it a thumbs up, give it a thumbs down, whatever you want to do. Subscribe to it, share it, make a comment. But really, make a comment that's going to help me to get myself back on track, okay? I'm going to eat my cutie. Now, this is my snack before, you know, whatever. I needed this. I'm hungry. I haven't eaten in a couple hours. So anyway, I love you all. It's me, I'm Red Mama. For those of you who know me by that page. And finally, sleeve vertically. For those of you who know me by that page, and I started another page called Slot Bopper, where I make videos of myself playing a slot machine. I don't know how that's going to work out, because I know I need to quit doing that. But anyway, I only play petty slots. But anyway, I'll see y'all next time. Okay, love y'all.